Welcome back to the channel. This is Simon Cromer, and today I'm going to be sharing everything you need to know about wool pads. Now, it's about mid November here in South Florida, and we're going to be putting these two hurricanes behind us. We have a lot of great weather coming up ahead, so we're going to be doing a lot of detailing, a lot of business, a lot of work, and you're going to get to see it all. So make sure if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button now. Be sure to turn on bell notifications so that every time I release a video, you will be notified. And now for those of you who are up north, if you are fortunate enough, maybe you're in heated storage, you're also going to get the opportunity to work on your boat this winter. So you're going to want to tune in. You're going to want to watch this video. We're covering wool pads, compounding, everything that you need to know, everything that's going to help you restore your boat. Now, what do I have in front of me today? I have the only two pads that you're ever going to need to restore your boat. And that is going to be the Buff and Shine wool compounding pad and the Buff and Shine medium wool pad. So we're going to be discussing everything you need to know about these pads today, the pros, the cons, what's good, how to run them, how to work them, and everything in between. Now, Buff and Shine, the reason I choose these pads is number one, they are reasonably priced. So you're going to get these for about 20, 22 bucks, and the quality is superior. I've tried out many pads. I've used 3M, right? Those are super expensive pads. These are the best quality at the best price. They last long, and they work great. So these are the two pads and pretty much the only pads that I will use in my detailing business. Now, with that said, guys, let's jump in and let's go ahead and get started with the wool compounding pad. Let's go ahead and run some live footage so that you guys can follow along as I explain this pad. So the first thing we're going to talk about is this pad is priced at $22.99 and you can purchase this at marinedetailsupply.com. This is going to be the best place to purchase the pad. And the first thing that I want to talk about is what machine we're using with this pad. We always want to use a rotary machine. This is going to give us the fastest amount of power. So we're going to get a lot of RPMs. We're going to be able to work up to 3,500 if we really wanted to. But this machine allows us to get powerful, allows us to get aggressive with our cutting. So the best two machines here are going to be DeWalt or Makita rotary buffers. Now, another thing I want you to keep in mind is if you're a boat owner who is on a budget and you can only purchase one pad, this is that pad that you're going to want to do all your detailing needs because this pad cuts out oxidation and that is the most important part in the detailing and restoration process. Now, what is this pad good for? So the heavy wool pad is great for cutting out heavy oxidation, medium oxidation. This is going to give you the best chance at cutting out oxidation. Now, also, it's great for taking out sanding scratches. So this boat was a full restore. It was sanded with 1000 grit sandpaper. And then I'm just following up and I'm doing the buffing with the wool pad. So this is going to take out all your sanding scratches if you're doing a sanding job. Also, this pad heats up heavily. So that allows you to take out a lot of heavy scratches. So over time, depending on how you're washing your boat, you know, is your boat banging up against your dock? All these scratches are going to get created in your boat and this gives you the best opportunity to take those scratches out because the wool pad it heats up it gets really hot when that happens you're able to heat up the gel coat move the gel coat around take out oxidation and this is how that works also when i'm running this pad how do i like to run it well i usually run it around a thousand rpms and then i'm going to finish this pad so after i do a couple of passes i'm going to finish this pad around 15 to 1800 RPMs and how I run it and how I hold it. Well, I'm going to tilt this machine on an angle so that I can pressure all of the pad into one spot and I can cut out the most amount of oxidation and scratches in that single spot. And then once I run a few passes of vertical and horizontal, I'll finish the pad out flat against the surface to make sure I'm leaving the best amount of finish because we're going to talk about some pros and some cons with this pad. And one of the cons is going to be swirls. So that's why we're going to want to finish this pad out flat against the surface. Now, this is a great overview of the basics. Let's jump to the pros and cons of this pad. What are the pros to using the wool compounding pad? Now, there are three here and they all kind of go together. So we have heat, oxidation removal, and scratch removal. Now, before we get too far, I want to mention something. When you're running a heavy cut pad, we want to stick to heavy cut compounds because that is what the pad was intended for. So Stark Level R, Ardex Super 600, Presta Supercut, 
3M Heavy, these are going to be your best options when running this pad. So we don't want to run polishes, we don't want to run waxes with this pad, or we're going to run into a lot of issues with swirls, and we're not going to get the results that we were hoping for. So always use this for the right purpose, and that is heavy cut compounds or medium cut compounds. Now, what the heat, the oxidation removal, and the scratch removal have in common is when you're running this pad, this is the hottest pad that you're going to get in the detailing restoration process. So this pad creates a lot of heat, and when that happens, you're able to take out oxidation from the gel coat and onto the pad. And also, while you're running this pad, you're creating a lot of heat, which allows the gel coat to become flexible and movable. So this is why you're able to take out scratches. That gel coat gets so hot, you're able to actually move the gel coat around. Now, we don't want to take out gel coat. All we want to do is we want to move it around. So these are going to be your biggest pros with this pad. Now, we do have a few cons with this pad, and let's go ahead and talk about that next. Con number one is going to be swirls, and you pretty much can't avoid that with this pad. Now, there's going to be a couple of you guys in the comments who are going to say, you know, I've been doing this for 10, 20 years, and I can get this to finish out perfectly. Now, that's really going to come down to what kind of compound you're using, but it's really rare that you're going to get a perfect finish with a wool pad and a heavy cut compound. So you are going to have swirls, which is going to be the reason why you cannot do a one-step buff on your boat. So you cannot just do a one-step heavy cut buff and then expect to wax your boat. You're going to have to do a buff a polish and then a wax so swirls is one of the biggest issues with this pad and it's unavoidable but it's part of the process and it's totally worth it because you're cutting out oxidation scratches and you're getting your boat looking right now the second con and pretty much the final con that i can think of with this pad because this pad does a lot for us when we're trying to restore our boat is going to be burning the gel coat now usually if you're newer or you're a boat owner kind of just getting started you have an increased risk at burning gel coat and when you're working around corners when you're holding your buffer in the same spot this is what creates burns in the gel coat so if you do burn your gel coat all you need to do is wait a while wait a few hours for it to cool down sand that part down and rebuff it out but you got to be really careful when you're doing this because you can actually burn it more and you can create further problems so just be careful and make sure you're always moving your pad and be careful and be lighter pressured around corners that is going to save you so these are the pros and the cons of this pad. Let's go ahead, let's talk about the yellow medium wool pad. The medium yellow wool pad by Buff and Shine is another great pad, and this pad is priced at $24.99 at marinedetailsupply.com. Now, what is this pad used for? Well, we have a lot of reasons, and I'm gonna go ahead and explain all of them. So we have medium cutting. So if you have medium scratches in your boat, light scratches in your boat, this pad is excellent for that purpose if you have light oxidation. So let's go ahead and talk about a situational. Say you have a boat and it looks pretty shiny and you're really not sure, does this boat have oxidation? Is the oxidation light, right? If you're a boat owner, you maybe don't really understand the levels of oxidation, but if you're concerned that it does have a little bit of oxidation, this is gonna be the perfect pad to start with and you might actually be able to get away with a two-step. So what do I mean by that? Well, you can run this pad with something like a medium polish. So Stark Elevate, my favorite polish to run this pad with. You can run that as a one step. It's gonna clear up the surface, it's gonna take out light oxidation and it's gonna take out scratches. And if you can get this to finish swirl free by running the buffer flat, you're gonna be able to go ahead and jump right into a wax or a polymer after that process. The other situation where you can use this pad is actually a second step to the white wool pad. So if we're working on a boat and it's heavily oxidized, we're doing a full restoration, a bunch of sanding, or maybe it's even a colored hull because these colored hulls tend to get more oxidation. Well, we can run the white wool pad. We can run that with Stark Level R. Then we can come back. We can run the yellow medium wool as a second step. This is going to be a synthetic wool pad and it's going to reduce swirls. It's going to take out more oxidation, leave us a better finish for the foam pad. So really what we're trying to do with these two pads is we're trying to get the best surface that we can before we have to take a foam pad to the surface. So foam pads can never take out oxidation. So we always have to make sure we do that with these two pads prior to our foam, prior to our waxing. So this pad is great for multiple uses. It's a versatile pad for certain occasions. Not all the time are you gonna use this pad but it does come in handy for color gel coat and for light oxidation. This could be the perfect pad to use if you are in that situation. Now, what RPMs do I run this at? This pad likes to run hot, it's synthetic, and it's not gonna actually heat up as hot 
as the wool pad so you can run it faster and it's going to finish out better. So we want to start around 1500 and we want to finish this pad around 2200. Now you always want to look at your compounds and your polishes if you look at the recommendation on the speeds but this typically is where I'm running this pad. So 1500 to start, 2200 to finish. That's going to leave us with a great polish and a great setup for whatever we decide to do next. And I do tilt this pad on an angle sometimes to cut. Not always. This pad is going to be ran more flat against the gel coat. But if you need to do a little bit of cutting, light oxidation, scratch removal, you can tilt it initially. And then always make sure you finish this pad flat to eliminate swirls. Now, there are a few pros, there are a few cons with this pad, and that is what we're gonna talk about right now. What are some of the pros to using the yellow medium synthetic wool pad? Well, believe it or not, we're gonna have a lot of the same pros as we did with the previous white wool pad. However, everything is gonna be on a reduced level. So we're still getting heat, we're still getting oxidation removal, we're still getting scratch removal. However, because the material is synthetic, it's all gonna be reduced which makes this pad perfect for different situations such as light oxidation, light scratch removal, and trying to get a one step out of your boat. So that is why this pad works straight for those reasons. But we also have a con from the last pad jumping into a pro. So now we have swirls being a pro because this pad, if you finish it flat, it's gonna reduce swirls. You're not gonna get a lot of swirls depending on what you're using. Now, if you're gonna be using a medium compound, you still might get some swirling with this pad. So that's something to be careful with. But if you're gonna be using polishes, you should be in good shape. So Stark Elevate, one of my favorite polishes to use with this pad. You have Minzerna 400, 3M Perfect it, right? Just throwing some out there for you guys. And pretty much the benefits of this pad are pretty much very similar to the last pad. However, Swirls now jumps up to a pro. So now let's go ahead and talk about some cons with this pad. Well, there really only is one con that I can think of with this pad, and that's just sometimes this pad simply is not gonna work for what you're trying to do. So if you're trying to buff a boat and you don't realize it has a lot more oxidation than you think, this pad is not gonna work no matter what polish you use or compound you use, this pad is gonna make that problem worse because this is not the right pad for the job. So if you have super oxidation, you're gonna have to go to a wool pad, or better yet, you're gonna have to wet sand your boat down first so this pad is going to be ineffective. Now, sometimes if you're trying to do polishing or your boat looks really good, it looks really nice, you're trying to use this pad. Well, because your boat is in such good condition, this runs into another issue of where this pad is not the right one for the job. So why does this happen? I'm not really sure, but sometimes Minzerna 400, even Elevate, when you try to run this pad on a super clean and fresh gel coat, it just simply can't take all the polish off the boat. So I don't know if that's because the grits are too big and it's like it almost cannot work into the gel coat, but sometimes when you run this pad, it'll just leave little splotches of compound or polish around the gel coat. So if your boat is too good, it's in great condition, this pad is not the right one for the job, you're gonna have to jump to a foam pad, and that is really the two cons with this pad. So not a whole lot of cons, but sometimes you're gonna know right off the bat that this pad is just not the one for your boat. So that's a great thing about this pad, is when you use it, you're gonna know, yes, this works, or no, this is not working, let's try something new. So guys, here's a rundown of the two pads once again. So we have a white wool compounding pad, great for heavy oxidation, heavy scratch removal. It's gonna be great after wet sanding. And then we have our yellow medium synthetic wool pad, great for light oxidation, light scratch removal. And this is gonna be great sometimes if you wanna try to get a one step out of your boat. So a one step polish and then a wax or a polymer. So these are your two pads, great for restoration. I hope you guys got a lot of value out of this video. If you did, guys, I want you to comment below. Are you restoring your boat this year? How are things going? What does your process look like? And I need you guys to continue to support this channel so we can continue to have more videos. So go ahead and use the code TOPDOC15 at marinedetailsupply.com for any of your Stark Yacht Care products, great products in working on restoring your boat. So we have great pads, great products. Guys, also, you're gonna wanna be sure to subscribe. Be sure to hit that bell notification so that you guys can be notified every time I come out with a video. Like, share this with other people. Let's go ahead and help more boat owners, more detailers. I got a lot of you guys here. I will see you on the next video. Peace out.